Welcome to this uh, video that covers the change control feature. This new feature allows you to track intent changes using a unique ticket that is uh, associated with one or multiple actions and provides a stage approve deploy workflow with uh, users that have the required privileges. Consequently, two new user roles come with this feature, the approver role and the deployer role. In other words, when you enable the change control feature, any deployment operations through the GUI or REST API will not be allowed without a change control ticket. When changing a configuration on a device, you will be able to save the configurations that you entered for the specific fabric, but you will not be able to deploy those configurations until the change control workflow has been completed for this specific operation. For example, when a stager wishes to create a new network, and if he owns the role of deployer, he needs to create a new ticket. Then he submits the request with uh, the concerned ticket for approval. A user with the approval role reviews the intent and approve or deny the changes and submit his decisions back to the uh, deployer. The deployer role can now deploy the configurations toward the devices. And now the loop is closed. The stager can now focus on the next actions. All tickets are recorded, so you can review any tickets at any time. Now, at this stage, the deployer can also roll back the last action recorded in the ticket or all actions described in this ticket. Okay, now let's go with uh, a demo of uh, the change control and rollback, which is uh, available since uh, NDFC 1213B. For the change control functions, different roles are assigned to uh, the user profiles. We will use LDAP protocol to remotely authenticate the user profile. Two roles are crucial for the change control. One role that needs to deploy new configurations and another role to approve the concern future deployment. Each user profile is assigned to a particular group. For example, the group ND deployer contains the user deployer and the group ND approvers includes a user approver. This done from the Nexus Dashboard Admin menu, you need to create an LDAP logging domain to authenticate the remote user. From the Admin Console, call the Authentications menu. A logging domain LDAP has already been created for previous usages. You can edit this logging domain to see its configurations. When you add a new provider, you need to specify all the details, hostname or IP address of the remote authentication server, which is your Active Directory in this case. Provide the base DN and the bind DN, which depend on how your LDAP server is configured. You can get the values from the distinguished name of uh, the user created on the LDAP server. Provide the key for the providers, which is the password of the bind DN user and specify the LDAP attributes based on the options used to determine the group membership and roles. When done with the provider, you need to map the group of users created in the Active Directory with the rules and add a distinguished name per group with uh, the different strings associated to the DN, such as uh, common name ND deployer. Each group maps to a series of rules the ND deployer is assigned to the right privilege change deployer, so the user can create configurations, but he needs the approval to deploy his configurations. And the ND approvers is assigned with the right privilege change approver, and this user can approve or deny the configurations submitted by the deployer to be deployed. To use the change control and rollback functions, you need to activate the feature from the Feature Management menu. So go to the Fabric Controller, 
go to the settings menu and select the feature management options. Enable change control and apply. It takes few seconds. You will need to refresh the page for the new menu to appear. Now you can log out from the admin user. and log into NDFC with the remote user deployer. From the topology menu, you can select, for example, Fabric 1. And from this Fabric 1, you can now directly call the detail view and look at the VRF tab. There is only one VRF, tenant 1, and uh, two overland networks, Web T1 and App T1. The user deployer can now create a new routed network, same as usual. Enter the VLAN ID and the network name, Net2301. Create a new VRF for this network with the name new VRF and save. However, in order to save the VRF creations, now the deployer needs to create a new ticket. You need to provide the description for that ticket, ticket 28, and you save it. Now back to the network, Net2301, now you can provide its default gateway. And you save. Because it's a new action, you are asked to either create a new ticket or reuse the existing one just created for the VRF creations. Here you select the existing ticket 28. The network Net2301 has been provisioned, but it's not deployed yet. Now, you wish to attach the network to the leaf nodes and interfaces of interest. Double click on the network Net2301 and select the tab Network Attachment. Select the leaf node 111 and 112 and from the Action menu, select Edit. Select uh, Attach and select the interfaces you wish to attach this network. In this case, you want to attach the network 2301 to the interfaces E1-7. Do a save. As this is a new action, the deployer is asked to save the changes to the ticket 28 by default. You can also create a new ticket if you, if you wish, but uh, the goal is to use the same ticket to carry multiple actions related to the same initial intent. So it's up to you. After some um, kind of hesitation, the end user decides to attach the network to the leaf node 115. Edit. Attach, select the interface uh, E1 slash 7 and do a save. As expected, the deployer has to save uh, the new changes to the ticket and use the same ticket 28. We can see now that the network configuration and attachments are provisions and are ready to be deployed, pending. However, the user deployer does not have access to the deploy button as it is grayed out. As a result, the deployer needs to submit the ticket for approval from the change control menu. The ticket 28 just created appears. The deployer needs now to submit the ticket for approval. It provides uh, the command for the ticket and submit. Now the status of the ticket is approval pending. Now you log in to NDFC using the approver user. Look at the change control menu and see the new ticket 28 pending for approval. You can double click on the ticket to get further details. You can read the description of the ticket and you notice the configuration associated to leaf 115. 
as you can see, there are the four all actions created previously for that ticket. And for each action, you can get the detailed view that you can expand. You can also get the detailed history and preview the generated configurations. However, in this scenario, for any reason, it's not currently permitted to push the configuration to the leaf 115. So the approval denies the request and provides the reasons and asks the deployer to remove the configuration associated to leaf node 115. Back to the deployer, who noticed uh, the deny, open the ticket and look at the message from the approver. As a result, the deployer calls from the action menu roll back the last actions related to leaf node 115. Do a confirm. A pop-up notification confirms the successful rollback for the last actions, which has now disappeared from the list of actions. The deployer can now resubmit the ticket for approval with a message describing the last actions. Back to the approver window. You can check now that the configuration related to leaf node 115 has been removed. You can check the last action that concerns the attachment of uh, leaf node 111 and 112 only. All looks good, hence the approver approves the ticket with a new message. Back to the deployer window, after the refresh, he noticed the ticket is now approved. He can now deploy the configuration from the change control menu by selecting the ticket of interest. You can preview the configuration as usual and deploy. Now you can open the detailed view of uh, Fabric 1 to see if the new VRF and Network 2301 have been created and how it has been attached to the leaf nodes and interfaces. The deployment and rollback has been successful. It is also possible to roll back the series of actions directly from the ticket. So from the change control menu, select uh, the complete ticket tab. And from the list of tickets, you can retrieve the last ticket 28. Select ticket 28 and from the action menu, select Rollback. Confirm. The process takes a few seconds to prepare the rollback, meaning uh, to revoke the old configuration previously pushed to the leaf nodes in Fabric 1. Return to the Active tab, select the new ticket related to ticket 28, and deploy. You can preview the configuration if you wish. After a few seconds, a pop-up window appears to notify the status of the deployment. Here, it is successful. Call the detailed view again for the Fabric 1. And as you can see, the new Network 2301 has been removed, as well as the new VRF. This demonstrated uh, a very easy way to roll back a series of actions in a single click. Thank you for watching.